Okay, so this is my solution of how I would do the problem Wednesday of week zero. And the problem was about a drive. And there's a drive from 40 miles south of Portland through Portland to 80 miles north of Portland. And the first question is, how long does the trip take? Well, what I would do is I would see that this whole distance here is uh, equal to 80 plus 40, which is 120 miles. And the problem says that the car is driving at 60 miles per hour. So for the first problem, I would say that the time is equal to 120 miles divided by 60 miles per hour, which is 2 hours. Now, I also would do this problem, though, using the kinematic equations. And the kinematic equation I would use says that x is equal to x naught, the time, or the position, rather, at time equals zero, plus speed times the time that's elapsed since zero. This is true for constant speed only. And today, at least, for the first day, we did a problem with constant speed. So I can use this equation. And so I go back up here and I see that in Portland, I'm going to call that the x equals zero position. And so 80 miles north, I'll call that x is plus 80. And for my um, the position 40 miles south, I'm going to call that x is minus 40. And so the starting point was at the minus 40. So this is negative 40 miles, and the final position was 80 miles, and then the speed, I'm going to write it this way, 60 miles per hour, and I like doing that because I can see then that the time, the time has to have units in hours in order for this equation to be true, miles, miles, and miles. Okay, and now I just solve, so I take 80 plus 40 is equal to 60 times t, that's 120 divided by 60 is t, or indeed 2 hours. That's the other method I would use. So how far does the car travel? Well, that question is pretty much the same, in fact, if I use the kinematic equations. And the difference is now that I need to know how far it travels. And so, in fact, I don't even care what the initial position is. This thing is called the displacement, and that's what the question is asking. And that's going to be the speed times the time interval. So that's 60 miles per hour times the time, which is 10 minutes. And I can see that minutes and hours, minutes and hours, will not cancel. So instead, I'm going to write this as 60 miles per hour times one-sixth of an hour. And the answer is 10 miles. And for the last part now, I'm going to graph position as a function of time. So here's time. And I see now that that position is going to simply march upward. And so it starts in 10 minutes, it goes 10 miles, and so on, and so on, and so on, all the way up until it has covered 120 miles in two hours. And what's notable here is that this is a straight line. The end.